feet at counterclockwise and force clockwise in the plane. We would like to be counterclockwise. I don't remember. That sounds interesting. It sure does. Lyrics. What about this? That's how you listen. I know the fantasy that was great. He always liked it? Only since I become pregnant. He can't keep his hands off of me when his mind upset. <laughs> what else is there? I mean, you understand. Up to a point for the male. <laughs> We're all obviously beyond that point. <laughs> I'm always like this. Lucky girl. Diane never noticed until after she became pregnant. I know what you're going through. I can sympathize. I hate the feeling of working alone. Continue in this vein. Carol, I don't mind that. That's my mind. You have. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're going through. We were married in June of 75. June what, dear? Go on, June what? I can remember the date of our anniversary. Every other year. June 12th. We were married on June 12th. Yeah. Oh, I was to how men remember things when they want to remember them. Oh, Alicia's going to be one disappointed little girl. Oops. Alicia's our daughter. You remember, don't you, Arne? Alicia was born on June 12th. The 22nd is our anniversary. There are no second guesses. You know I always get those two numbers mixed up. You work with numbers. Numbers as inches, as feet, and yards, not as days. You set our mom back a hundred days, but I'm the one who's suffering for it. Got that my first gift? I hear the tingle of an ice cream truck. How about a boat that comes? Yeah, right, guys. I'm aware. A Sunday or a float? How about buying an earring on June 22nd? <clears throat> See the tail of fortune off to most of the ones I want. Six weeks to our anniversary, and I'm already paid. Yeah, why is it that men always bear the burden of proof when it comes to anniversaries and birthdays? He's a lawyer. You can always tell. <laughs> men are invariably the parties who forget. <laughs> men, you can always tell. So, how about you, babe? Want something? How about Diane's I'll let you know which one. Well, I'm having a phone, but I'm buying for the group. Diane, what's your pleasure? I ask you first because my wife has to flip through her mental Rolodex before arriving at any decision. Uh, Sunday, mint chocolate chip double chocolate sprinkles. Sounds delicious. Make that too. Thank Coming you. with me? <laughs> I'm not staying here alone. I'm already out of set of earrings. At least you don't have to shop, that's true. <laughs> oh, hey, you're pulling out. Yo, calorie man! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the time, Glad to be of help. He'll get them for you? Probably. Robert's a romantic. He thinks he'll surprise me with him one night. So you can join his savings. Robert's up with strings and cracks. What do you care as long as your ears dabble? What's your new hit? Uh, six and six months. Line the eleven. If I deliver on that day, Arnie will really get confused. Are <laughs> 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 you kidding? I had trouble getting him to the hospital waiting room. Arnie had a dream. In his dream, there were all these men in the waiting room, pacing shoulder to shoulder, each of them smoking a pack of marbles and mint. Oh no. It gets better. Artie couldn't get his line to pace with him, said it was like rush out on LIE, no room left on the floor for him to walk. In his dream, Artie says they're all walking in the same direction for that walk. He's compelled to pace. So he jumps up on the furniture and goes stride to stride with him. He's on the couch, he's on the end table, he's on the armchair. He takes a carton of cigarettes out of his coat pocket. Somehow it fits in his breast pocket. Marlboro? He didn't say it doesn't smoke. Oh, that's good. Neither does Robert. Except he's a dream. He does. So he's frantically trying to keep up with the others while living in his pocket for a light. He realizes he has no lighter, no matches. He gets hit by this huge thing that he fits. Fun for shaking and trembling. Oh, this is a book like nightmare. Arnie screams, Will somebody give me a light? Anybody? The men stop all at once. Arnie looks at them, and they now have these identical green gargoyle heads out of a Japanese movie. The <laughs> end They pull identical red printed lights. Push their matching green monster parents. What does Arnie do? He lights up some of the garden. And then it's where it is here. <laughs> <laughs> he takes a couple of puffs and they all start marching in unison. <clears throat> uh -huh. And Arnie says, all of a 
sudden he feels this instantaneous change come over his body. He knows it's becoming one of the gargoyles. This is right out of the twilight zone. No outer limits. Artie looks down at his hair. And it's this five color with leathery skin and warty not all over it. Oh, that is awful. Yes, that is. But no, we're not with me. <laughs> His hand is now feathered. The tip of a wing. Artie goes berserker, stumbles over the end table, attach the chair to a mirror. And in it is this exotic white plumed bird with kind, pearl like sky blue eyes. And that bird is him. That is wonderful. I wonder what it means. He woke up. Artie's come a long way since Alicia was born. Robert wanted to go natural. Oh, there was never any question for either of us. It seemed much healthier for the baby than us. Almost for the mother. I suppose so. I know so. With my daughter, I was looking for medication 24 hours after. My eyes didn't focus more than a couple of seconds. Lightheaded. Lightheaded, to say the least. When they brought my baby to me first time, I thought the nurse was bringing in a basket of cellophane wrapped fruit that he was using. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia did have a banana head of her, I hate to say. You <laughs> were able to be over a chair, no nothing, except the womb temperature, jellies, and that. Wait, but what's the purpose? They're back in Oregon. It's supposed to release pressure for the mother and simulate a womb extension experience for the infant, creating a bridge from the womb to the world. Wait, 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 but I thought the baby needed the shock of an extra uterine environment to get it to breathe. Well, apparently this is enough shock. Interesting. They're very progressive. In no, it sounds similar to the boy game, but for the emphasis is on the mother's I didn't hear she gets to choose the flavor of the gelatin. The color, Arnie, the color. Well, I heard rumors, flavor. The gelatin is for eating the purpose and it has no flavor. Well, it seems like a waste, all that jello. It is really <laughs> jello, Arnie. Then why do they call it jello? It's a synonym. Oh. The Zuni Indians of Western New Mexico scoop out the ground right after delivery, rub clean, wet sand between hot stones, spread the warm sand in the hole, and place a heated cloth over that. Sandbeds are called, one for the mother and one for the newborn. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was intrigued by various birth rituals. Oh, there's a link, don't you see, between the Jell-O method and the Zuni sandbed. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> so, Robert, know much about birth related dreams? Oh, great mom. Anyway, don't expect your baby to look like an ass for pampers. Oh, I know this is pretty grossed up right after the Alicia looked like a bruised banana the first couple of days, huh? He called her Chapita till I made it. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you tell me, you know it's a he. We know it's a it. He hopes for it. I'd be satisfied with a healthy girl. Pivot all around. <laughs> Difficult at the median point of the third trimester to call out a baby for it. I don't see how you I'm only trying to keep an open mind and keep you from being disappointed. I won't be disappointed as long as it is healthy. I am. I think. Robert, it is. No, don't be ridiculous. Your feet are swollen. I'm afraid that his feet swell. I have sympathy. I'll switch it. <laughs> Robert. Make sure that Diane practices her Google exercises. Those are important for later on. You're a piece of work, aren't you, honey? Kugel? He means Kegel. <laughs> well, Kugel and Kegel, who cares as long as you do them? Your mother. According to her, she makes the best Kugel in her hottest song. <laughs> Not to mention all of Long Island. Is that what she's always going on about? Among other things. I thought that stuff was deep dish Kanish. How could you not know Kugel? You grew up in a Jewish household. As soon as I was old enough to leave home, I ate out. <laughs> the point is, the workbook says that Kegel is the most important exercise of the rest of a woman's life. Your concern touches me. I paraphrase from the workbook. Good muscle tone in the pelvic cavity enhances sexual pleasure by narrowing the vaginal canal. For both partners. It enhances sexual pleasure for both partners. Well, that goes without saying. Sure, it does. <laughs> <laughs>
Unless you're against it. I will pick Adam no. salad. The Imperial has a great chef salad. Well, actually, tonight, the lobster special. Oh, I had my heart set on the lobby. Oh, come on, Diane. Go for a lobster. <laughs> you know you want to suck on those tentacles. <laughs> I'll have some lobster. Oh. Ever since the EPT Brown ring, he's been trying to fatten me up. I want some stand your pound it on that little boy of ours. But what if that little boy is a little girl? She goes right on the diet. <laughs> <laughs> The Della two doors down from the Manhattan twins. Good Nova. Rock size, we tried. Delicious, right? Despite the smoke. I was thinking the same thing. What are you doing here, Diane? Denny's involvement? Being a parent is one of life's greatest pleasures. We do them for Alicia. You have a load of wonderful experiences well, ahead of you. They have the best classes on the island. <laughs> Last week, I mean, I prepared for it. All of our friends recommended them. They carry quite a selection. Of <laughs> no, if I know, we've gotten to the lingerie party sooner. You'll be more than satisfied. I don't follow. Oh, our next door neighbors threw a lingerie party. You know, Tupperware for the bedroom. I can't get on you, Lorenzo. We're not enthralled by the idea, but they are our neighbors. We had a great turn. Our child was conceived. <laughs> <laughs>
Diane. She did Rothstein. Yeah. 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 So how are they? Look, we've been meaning to call. You know how it is. No time. Say, here, I can't tell you how many times you know I've said it. I've called you to. I a four-year-old and go to Kiwi and then I I call her Kiwi. She slid out with this perfectly shaped noggin covered in brown spikes of hair. Sort of a mini punk look. I said to my wife, she's a Kiwi. And she is. Her name's Angela. Angela, Angela's a beautiful name. You know, all people are made of three things. So say Greenland, Polar Eskimos, a body, a soul, and a name. They believe a name is magic. It suits her well. She's precious. And a good kid. I've never seen a kid this good. Three weeks old she was, not coochie twinger. She cackled throughout my face. A regular lap of meter, this one. Carol's got a leash in her plane and down to Manhattan. Walt is Miss Cinderella. Yeah, some things never go out of style. I get to guard her balloons. Could have put them in the car, I guess. No, let me air fresh. The child is not named until after it laughs in its father's face. <laughs> you would be a very proud father to have named your daughter so soon. She sleeps so peacefully. <laughs> uh, you mind? No, not at all. Not in this era. This era is terrific. So, how was that against later? It was long. 15 hours. Oh, that's tough. We had a son, John Muscletel. Carol was thrilled to know. Born on his two days. That never happens. The, uh, the 14th, this one. Wait, it's seven o'clock. Six pounds one out. That's a good size. Small. Labor was a snack. Three hours and 11 minutes. We get to the hospital. They tell us to skip the shower breathing, forget Ethelrage, and go straight from Camp Low. I have my treatment here. Three days before she was born, the guard woman and the bird is exactly the same as last time, except this time, I feed in the hospital. Diane's calling for Rothstein. I had to get out of those antiseptic white rooms. They're waiting. Waiting for days. Tests. More tests. The same tests again. Oh, a valve in his heart doesn't function properly. I'm sorry. No operate? <coughs> We're waiting to hear. You know, Jonathan's 11 months old, and he's been in and out of that hospital three times. Each time it keeps him longer. They don't like to put him in the hospital. Administer anesthesia until after he's at least a year old. There's always a chance he won't wake up. They'll have to operate it. Not now, soon. You have a prayer. Thank you, Arden. Arden. <clears throat> we were going to invite you to the bridge, but Diane figured you'd either had your baby or were about to. That's where I first suspected that something was wrong. The bridge. After the circumcision, Jonathan whimpered. No scream, no real crying, small tears. And he slowly turned blue. Loretta, our nurse, tried to reassure us that she'd seen these kind of things before. That felt Diane. Diane trusted the nurse. <coughs> when he turned blue three days later, Loretta said we better contact our pediatrician and the tests began. Jonathan looks up at me with eyes of my own. And I can do nothing. Say nothing to comfort him, to ease whatever fluttering fits and starts of blood pulsing through his heart. When he looks at me, he has my eyes, Diane said. I almost wish. You know, at home, he sleeps with wires attached. Our civilization is inadequately prepared. Earlier societies had custom practices to guard against the possible mistakes of birth. 
The Greeks went among themselves, saying, A male was ill favored, thereby avoiding the envy and wrath of jealous God. And on the fifth day of the infant's life, the father ran naked around the hearth fire with his son in his arms, burning off the strangeness of the new one, cleansing him by fire. The Arabs, father, took a stick with a bark script and rubbed it over the backs of the village children, captured their magic power, their goodness, and transferred that magic that we call help to his child's back, rubbing and soothing to him with a chant from beyond tribal memory. Even God forsaken 19th century Fu Chow China revered any son, no matter how malformed, as a great, great happiness. A daughter was only a small happiness. I can imagine what you're going through. Every parent has those fears. Those fears are our reality, and they never cease. Well, I better leave you now. <clears throat> yeah. If you just talk when you want to, what we call faith, we advocate it to machines and then wear a sterilized mask. The price of our technological wonders is the loss of wonder, the healing sound of superstition. You know, I order my life on facts and codicils and party of the first whereas. You're right. I shouldn't be involved. I'm not coming now. I'm talking to you. If there is a godlike power in this world, and if it sent me a son, some sort of old, then I would recognize it. Who among us would? That trait has been. Brad, we've been educated to discount such possibilities. If I could, I would gather up my son and run naked with him around anybody. I couldn't take him from that prison that I tried. I just want the, the chance to do do for my son. And I am green. Stillborn dreams are what remain. You had no dream. What you had was a nightmare. A nightmare brought on by festering anxiety. I had a dream. Cigarette smoking 3D monsters that do step on cue. It was a dream. My dream. Fine, what you say? No, Robert. It's what it was. I said it this time, and it was exactly as before, and that's true. Except, I didn't wake up right away when I looked at the mirror. We stared at each other. I had a bird, stared at my bird reflection in the mirror. And I became calm, filled with calm. Everything was going to be all right. That's what I was trying to tell me four years ago. Alicia, I'm going to miss that dream. <clears throat> and I wish I could give it to you. Robert told me about Jonathan. I'm really sorry. What did they say? Wait and see. Five days they didn't say that. Right. Why? Because I choose to. Because our child will not undergo surgery today. It did ever. But not today. I see. Can you trim on me? Stop this. This must be little Angela. 
you may research your Bible. That's what she is. She's adorable. I call her Key because of her hair. She tolerates it. <laughs> <laughs> That has a general for fine hospital. I'm sure he'll be okay. I mean that, Robert. Let's go home. Let me finish this big I wish it was wrong. Robert? I've never seen a baby this good. Uh, who these people were, I knew who they were as individuals, 
have you uh, who they were uh, as uh, uh, as couples, uh, who the two couples were, and what their relationships were to each other. I also thought uh, in the in that well, in both scenes, but especially the first scene, the uh, the variety of ways that you found to change the body, uh, getting the ladies up, and the ladies did, uh, you know, uh, and, yeah, uh, you did extremely well with, with, with all this. And, uh, and uh, uh, did you did you did you go watch somebody or, uh, to to find out? Because it is obvious where you were, where you were in this stage of the pregnancy, and, and consequently what you had to do in order to maintain uh, this, 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 this balance, and that, and that you just could not spring up uh, at this point of the game. Uh, and uh, but uh, so that uh, but 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 the game of uh, the shifting uh, the, the the variety of ways that you kept fighting. And they were all, and they were very meaningful. So that is the, the meaningful in terms of where they were sitting next to each other. Uh, the, uh, uh, oh, I don't forget, when the two husbands go out, the wives are sitting on separate benches, and then, and then one wife is going to tell the other wife something, uh, and so she tells her to come over, and the other one uh, gets up also somewhat laboriously, uh, and uh, comes over and, uh, and, and sits down the side of the foot and talk. Husbands come back in, uh, but just this, this, these very nice changes that showed us uh, differences as the differences in tone, differences in relationships, all of those things that we all were, were very well done. And then, of course, uh, when we came to the, uh, the second one, uh, then the real change in tone, uh, and we and we and we knew, and that is, and, and uh, great caught that immediately uh, as soon as the lights came back up or as soon as we saw him on stage or whatever. Uh, and at that point, we already knew something happened. Uh, you know, what, we didn't know, uh, but we knew, we knew something had happened. He, he was already, he, his, his whole physical being at that point was telling us this. So then when the other one comes in very proudly, Pushing the, the uh, perambulator. So at that point, uh, and, and again, again, the difference, just the difference in the the whole physical demeanor of those two men, immediately told us without anything else ever, there were no. We had we didn't have to have dialogue to tell us. Uh, we to fill in, explain, yes, but to tell us because he was shh, coming right on in, and, and his whole the way he bounced and his whole kind of uh, feeling there. Uh, huh. <laughs> Sorry. I couldn't find you. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but again, that difference. And then, of course, uh, as, uh, as, the, as was revealed to us. So I really thought that, uh, that, the, that the blocking the relationships of the characters, I mean, this is not, this is not a play of uh, You, you, you were asking what's the conflict in this play, uh, I would have to almost I have to stop and scratch my head but was I think mean, I gotta go I gotta go home and read it. Uh, because uh, I'm not sure that there is a real honest goodness conflict uh, here in the sense that we need to think about it, but maybe there is. Uh, but that didn't bother me and I think that's not a criticism. Uh, that's what, what what I'm saying is that I thought that you the strength of the play lies in it is a play uh, inspired by Aristotle. Uh, in this particular case, character I think is probably more important than plot. Uh, and uh, however, uh, I, I do think that at the end of that first scene, when we leave and everything is sort of so ide idyllic, uh, that at that point we are left with the feeling: Well, where are we going with this? So that when we come to the second scene. Uh, we uh, we are we're left with wow what happened in this first scene uh, what was going on and then of course prepare us for sort of uh, the changes in 
relationship that occurred in the second one. So it's sort of that's the that's the conflict in the play uh, in some way or the other. But the but sort of the strong suit of the play has got to lie in the characterization uh, and the depth of the characterization. And uh, that was sort of my point of view on that. I thank you very much. Very nice. Uh, I, the old first entrance, do they know each other when they come on at the beginning of the play? Are you in the Yeah. Oh. Um, okay. yeah. Or are they two couples wandering through the park one day and they run into each other <laughs> and they strike up because the two ladies are pregnant? And then they develop this, they watch this relationship grow from two couples who are not not know each other and it grows into that wonderful bond that can happen with people in the same ship traveling to that cross you know anyway that's what i i don't think they know each other they first come the far i would like that and i think that that grew i think they established a beautiful relationship i would like to see the two benches a little further apart uh so that uh, we had a little space for communication across that gap between the two benches and then when we come back in the second time, the baby carriage and so on could have been placed in near the points instead of having to put a special on it down here. Uh, <clears throat> wasn't special. It was an accident. It's it was an accident. And special. so we moved. We moved <laughs> well, it had a nice pink color. <laughs> anyway, it was either loud or uh, that pink with a green circle in it, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted. Uh, I would like to have seen uh, just, uh, I don't want it to go far, and I thought what you did was very, very lovely. And what's in love with Amy, remember? I do, you did a lot of uh, the, uh, the whole of the business, all of the business was good. I thought the tasting of whatever that green slime that you were doing. <laughs> And I thought it was great, uh, especially after we just gone through the green dress with the other production. Uh, I made all kinds of connections here. Uh, uh, the, the thing that, uh, that the, that relationship, the joyful things, uh, the the banter of husband and wife, I wanted that to be a little broader. I wanted a little more, you know, husbands are that way, you know. And, the minute I'm pregnant, it just drives me nuts. That's all I think about it. Sex, 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 sex. You know, and especially when it gets down there at the end. Okay, it's just all I think about that, that, that kind of business. Uh, and uh, uh, I just, the son, the son, the son, the daughter, the one we're going to have. And then I would, I, I thought that your transition into the psych, I was, I was very, very happy your transition into the second part and worked so very, very well. Uh, said, but if you go back and you think about the ritual of all the damn marvels, that in, in, in the waiting room and all that running back and forth, all this other, and then this other ritual, all the things that we know as ritual, and then this, and that wonderful thing at the end with, with the chicken foot, whatever they were, what they were like, huh? It's just, uh, and it stick there right up. And that, the magic of that was there, and you caught that magic, and that was there. Yes, I got just a sucker in it. Uh, so, but it, uh, it was really lovely, and it did catch, and you did show it, and oh, and thank you. Thank you so very, very much for not making me worry about that damn smoking cigarette. You went over and put it on. Thank you very, very much, and it was not that obvious, but I can't talk about the little things like that. But it was very nice of you to do that and not make me worry. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, I enjoyed it. I, I've seen all of them and I thought you had a very nice series. I, it's awful sitting in this seat. Normally I have a week or so to prepare what I'm going to say to you in class. But uh, I did enjoy it. I did like, I, oh, there are a lot of strangers here, you have, guys. I want to go out a month. I don't know a lot of you at this point. Uh, so, uh, no, it was nice. It was nice seeing you, nice watching you work. And uh, if anybody wants to talk about what I thought about anything, uh, I'll be here for Sunday. Just catch me if you can. <laughs> <laughs> I would like only to say in conclusion also that 
thank you for uh, asking me and thank you for, for listening. And most of all, thank the directors. Uh, I have seen uh, many fine new actors whom I do not know, and uh, I am so very glad uh, to have a chance to see them, to see them work, and uh, for them to uh, do the very fine work that they have done. And so I'm, I'm so very glad that you took the chances on, on these many new people and showed us what uh, both you and they could do.